Okay, let's start the um, RISC 101. Uh, by the way, I'm Nick, I'm VP Academics, also the academic, academic mentor. Uh, we'll give a formal introduction later, but uh, shall we do a poll first? Um, it's really about uh, knowing you guys, um, where you are from and um, what kind of um, level you are. So, yeah, the first, first question, what department are you from? And um, also what year? Oh, you guys respond really fast. I haven't seen one from Rothman yet. Okay. I see that um, most of you are from engineering and computer science, um, very evenly balanced, and some of you are from maths or others, and uh, most of you are in first year, and also second year, third year, very, 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 very similar. And um, okay, the last question, how would you like the course to be delivered? Um, okay, half of, exactly half of you chose um, synchronous and half of you chose asynchronous, okay. So um, th throughout the course, um, maybe we will change um, our way of delivery and still under the discussion, it's not finalized yet, but we just want to make sure the delivery to you guys is the best for all of you, um, in case maybe some of you cannot, cannot attend or some of you want to ask questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, great, thank, thank you very much for attending this, this poll. And um, let's begin. Okay, so about myself, um, I already, I have a different department. Also, um, I will be um, responsible for giving the sessions about um, MIS 101. Um, in academic department, there are also um, projects and um, other uh, interesting activities like um, we have the conference. Um, so. If you have any questions about that, we can discuss discuss later in the chat. Um, I'm currently finished third year. Um, I'm currently in PEY, and my major is um, engineering science robotics, and I'm pursuing AI manner. And my current internship at Huawei is in autonomous driving department, and I've done several past projects, including reinforcement learning, CNNs, and and depression early warnings. If you are interested about any of the projects, you can talk to me later in, in the chat. And here are my socials. Let's move on to Shubra. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Shubra here. Um, so I'm the VP Communications as well as Academic Mentor at UDMIST, um, and I will be co-hosting the yearly the um, year-long MIST 101 workshop with uh, Nick. Uh, so I'm a third year cognitive science student uh, specializing in computational cognition uh, with statistics and math minor. Uh, since I'm a cognitive science student, my uh, main focus is um, neural networks or in a broader sense, uh, deep learning. Uh, and this would be a very important topic in our MIST 101 series. Uh, we were talking great detail about this. Um, so one of my last projects that I had worked on was using key nearest neighbors. It's one of the machine learning algorithms, which we would also be talking about during our um, workshop series. So if there is, um, if you would want to know about the project, you can definitely message me and here are my socials. So you can definitely reach me out there. So 
you talk about talking or we can have to okay i think there's a little audio problem with it huh? can you guys hear me hello yeah. can you hear yes, me yes yes all right yeah. Uh, sorry for the technical glitch. My yeah, name is Hedam, yeah. and I'm the Assistant Vice uh, President for the Academic Department at UT Mist. I'm currently a second year computer engineering student at U of T. And my main focus is on CNN, that's the convoluted neural networks and computer vision. Secondly, uh, some of the past projects uh, on which I worked on is converting ASL, which is the American Sign Language, to English. So that's a computer vision project which uses machine uh, learning. Uh, the second project was about a game simulation using hand gestures to control various kinds of games like racing games, etc. And the third project was a drowsy driver detector, which helps in preventing accidents, which are caused by drowsy driving, and a few more uh, related to computer vision and machine learning. And if you want to connect with me, know more about my projects, or just want to say hi, here are my socials, uh, and you can connect with me. Okay, so let's see what we have today uh, for this workshop. Uh, so we would start with um, introducing what the MIS 101 series is, uh, what is machine learning, how is it different from deep learning artificial intelligence, what are the applications of machine learning, the new upcoming developments in the field, uh, some pop popular tools and resources to learn machine learning. Um, Okay, so what's this uh, MIST 101 series about? Uh, the goal for the series is to provide students with an overview of machine learning. So it's basically an introduction to some basic uh, machine learning algorithms and a glimpse of some more advanced techniques. Um, so our idea basically is that our fall semester would be for beginner uh, level topics um, and our winter would be for some advanced level topics. So, so those who already have some knowledge with machine learning can attend our uh, fall semester to reinforce your knowledge so that you can have a stronger foundation for the um, winter semester. Uh, we would be using PyTor PyTorch to perform machine learning on some uh, real world applications. And uh, this course would be year long and it would take place uh, bi-weekly. So our next event, uh, next workshop would be on October 1st by Nick. Um, and also all of these events, uh, all of our workshops um, would be recorded and posted on YouTube. And uh, what we intend on doing is that we would be having a lecture section as well as um, hands-on tutorial section. So you would get to um, get, you would get a chance to um, play with some machine learning models and just implement what we have taught you in the lecture section. So moving on to the next slide. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the syllabus that we have planned for you for uh, the fall semester. Uh, so our first week, which is today, is just basic introduction. Our week two, which would be held by, with, uh, by Nick, would be on supervised learning, unsupervised reinforcement learning. Week three would be artificial neural network. Week four would be overfitting, um, underfitting, regular, uh, regularizations. And week five would be unsupervised learning, clustering, and k-means clustering. Okay, about the scope of the course, um, uh, so a lot of people have asked um, if, they are, uh, if they are able to attend the course, if they have very little knowledge. So yes, uh, fall sessions very suitable for beginners with little or no knowledge, and um, winter sessions are more advanced and challenging. So the course is not designed for students. If you're interested in machine learning, you can just come. Um, and um, if you have no knowledge, that's great because we're going very slowly with everything. And we want to highlight that um, as an organization called UT MIST, our goal is to clear the MIST for you. Hence this course is dedicated to these students that are not familiar with machine learning into the field. So um, if you had uh, some experiences before, I encourage you to take the winter part as the topics will be more advanced and um, as the academic mentors, we will try our best to provide as much as we can.
Um, so looking at the prerequisites for the course, which a lot of you have asked us um, on the chat section, as well as there were many questions during various orientations that we um, were a part of. So um, what we expect you to know is uh, some basic uh, knowledge, uh, some basic prior experience with calculus. And for calculus, it's basically just high school mathematics, um, like just knowing how to calculate partial differentiate, uh, like just knowing basic calculus, we don't expect you to know how to calculate partial, uh, to do partial differentiation. Um, some basic knowledge with linear algebra, which is like just matrices and vectors, but nothing more advanced than this. Um, also statistics, uh, basic as well, mean, with standard deviation, median, some basic distributions like uniform distribution, uh, things like that. Uh, and most importantly, we would want you to have some programming experience. Um, any uh, language uh, works well, but we would prefer you to have uh, to know um, Python, because uh, most of our um, tutorial section would we would be doing we would be using Python. Uh, but either ways, if you don't know how to do Python, don't worry. It's very it's a very easy language, and you are you can definitely learn along the way. Okay, then at the beginning of the course, we want to do um, the first question, what is machine learning? Uh, you guys are encouraged just to take a guess. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Most of you chose an um, algorithm that learns through experience. Um, so let's check if that's correct. Yeah, so you guys are correct. <laughs> is it black magic though? I think it is, right? <laughs> um, but um, as we'll be um, diving, to, diving to the course, you'll find that there are magical parts in machine learning as well. But um, the correct answer is, yeah, machine learning is, is about algorithm that learns through experiences. Okay, so we have another poll question for you. Um, how do you think uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence are related with each other? Are they the same? ML is a branch of AI, AI is a subset of ML, or you don't have any idea? Okay, wow. <laughs> Seems like quite a few know what it is. Um, okay, so, well, most of the people chose ML as a branch of AI and uh, lesser people chose AI as a subset of ML. Uh, so let's uh, click on uh, ML as a branch of AI and see if it's the right answer. Well, yes, it is a branch of AI, and we would um, go in much detail uh, in the coming slides. Okay, uh, so let's start with what is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a simulation of human intelligence processed by machines, um, especially computer systems. It's based on the principle that human intelligence can be defined in a way that a machine can easily mimic it and execute tasks from the most simple to those that are even more complex. The goals of artificial intelligence include learning, reasoning, and perception. Whereas uh, machine learning is an application or a subset of AI because it allows machines to learn from data without being explicitly uh, programmed. And now deep learning is a branch of machine learning that imitates the working of a human brain in processing data and creating patterns for use in decision-making. Um, a deep learning model basically um, can determine uh, on its own uh, if a prediction is accurate or not through its own neural network. Uh, and neural network would obviously be a topic which we would be talking about later. So to summarize uh, the different 
differences between all three. Uh, we can just think of AI uh, simply as intelligence exhibited by machines uh, that can be used in a beneficial way. Example, carrying out tasks, making decisions, assisting humans, saving lives. And more specifically, AI describes when a machine is able to learn from information um, and it generates some degree of understanding. And then it uses the knowledge um, learned to do something. And AI includes machine learning and specific techniques such as deep learning as its subsets. Yeah, so as we discussed earlier, right, to, to do artificial intelligence, um, it's not necessarily just uh, machine learning. And um, there are many ways to be constructed. The traditional approach, I think uh, many of you guys, in, especially in computer science, you have already experienced that, that uh, we write a computer program that executes a set of rules or algorithms. And for the same input, we always expect a similar output. And the output is only determined by the input and the algorithm. So, um, for example, right, uh, I think some of you uh, might have um, written similar. Um, computer science or, or science. Um, so for this chess game state, right, if we naively program the computer to search for a move that profits the most, then um, it will probably be um, the, the bishop taking the knight. Right? Um, if we build a game search tree or other more complicated algorithms, then a computer might give us a more um, optimal move. For example, the search for multiple layers and, and finding a best move, it's, it, it's um, best for um, itself and um, it's worse for the opponent, right? However, no matter how the game um, is developed, right? Once a computer encounters this exact same board state, it will output the same move. And I think that is the characteristic of, a tr of the traditional approach, right? In machine learning approach, it, the machine learning approach, it will design a learning algorithm, right? That can learn from examples. One algorithm can solve a family of tasks instead of just one task. And even for the same task, given the, the model or the algorithm, different data will lead to different output results. So uh, as the old saying suggests, right? Uh, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day and teach a man to fish, you feed him for, for a lifetime. We expect the model to generalize to other scenarios where um, it hasn't been seen. And taking the same chess game, for example, we could train a deep learning model with chess playing data. It learns through the data to cope with different board states and produce an optimized output. There are many ways to train a model like that. And as you know, um, AlphaGo is trained like this and beat it one of the best human players. And different from the traditional approach, the machine learning model may generate different moves with the same force state, and its strategy might be different if trained with different data. For example, if, if, if the model hasn't seen some um, moves or scenarios or techniques, then it never learns to deal with that. Now, the comparison does not necessarily suggest that machine learning models are better than traditional approaches all the time, but um, they both have unique advent uh, advantages and there is a bad implementation in different tasks. And here are a few applications, right? For, for simple tasks, machine learning model can do classification. Uh, data can be classified to each class or label. And machine learning can also predict data based on the past data. For example, whether prediction or stock market prediction as you've seen in the engineering projects. Uh, we do have the stock market pred prediction and the uh, house price prediction. And more advanced model can recognize patterns in images and sequence of data, like, like the text or music. Right? One of the field of this study is uh, natural language processing, where the model just learn about natural language. Like your keyboard input method uh, can sometimes predict your next word or correct the usage. Uh, it's, it's based on this study. And uh, finally, we have uh, some more advanced topics, um, including computer vision, robotics control, 
and planning and game playing, right? where we want to show you some demonstrations. Okay, so let's do something exciting and uh, let's get into the interactive approaches. So this is a quick demo by Google and it's a doodling uh, game which is created by Google to teach people how neural networks actually work. So let's just play this small game and see uh, how neural nets actually do the stuff they do. So first of all, our first task is to draw a leaf. Uh, a disclaimer, I'm not that good in I see link. one. So or string let's bean. see. Oh, I know. It's leaf. So it correctly identified it as a leaf. We have an ocean. Sure. Oh, I know. It's ocean. That's great. I see line. Or marker. Or crayon. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure what that is. Seems like I'm not that good doodling. Sorry, I couldn't guess it. I see me. Or garden hose. Or shoe. Oh, I know. It's skateboard. I see elbow. Or suitcase. Or sleeping bag. Or radio. I see stereo. Oh, I know. It's stove. I see squiggle. Oh, I know, it's river. So as you can see, it had uh, asked me, it had given me a task to draw six of these objects and let's see how it uh, identified them. So take for example, this leaf. Uh, it's, uh, it had a correct match of the leaf. The second closest match was a feather and you can see why, because they have nearly the same shape, uh, similar textures, because uh, you can see these lines and the feather has similar lines. And the third closest match was asparagus. And um, how it was trained on these. So as you might have heard that these models are trained on a lot of data. So this is some of the data which, on which it was trained. And these data were given by various people. And uh, that's basically how this model was able to predict them. Say for example, the skateboard. The second closest match was a school bus. The third was a car. Again, you can see that they have similar structures. They have two circles and a kind of rectangular oval section. So that's how the computer vision, this particular neural net works and uh, gives us the right outputs. Again, again, going back to our goals, just a minute. Uh, Nick, can you explain this slide? Nick? Yeah. So this is a demonstration of, uh, hello? Can, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. So this is a demonstration of um, deep learning cars. It's a popular video on YouTube. You can see that um, at the beginning, uh, the system will send out a batch of cars, but um, most of them are just crashing to the walls because they are just explore randomly. Um, there's not a understandable model to to go through the games, but um, as it learns and evolves, it knows that okay, I need to go as far as possible to travel through the tubes. Right? So the model adjusts itself, and the more cars are beginning to travel farther and farther. And um, later there will be one car that passes all of the tubes. But it, it is not sufficient right, for it cannot be regarded as successful for a model if only one car can pass this sort of game. So the model needs to learn in more detail how to let all of the cars pass this game. So Hitafi, you can fast forward to the near the end.
Yeah, you can see that now it's very different from the beginning. Nearly every car in this batch can reach a very far distance, and many of them can achieve the final destination, which indicates a successful uh, learning process. Autonomous drive is here, and I'm going to take a look at the intelligence behind it and what. Can you guys hear the audio? Yeah. All right. Part AI plays in deep learning. <laughs> Let's start with how an autonomous car sees. We've got laser sensors in the front and the camera, radar sensors in the rear, a top down camera, and a big computer in the trunk so that all yes, of this visual data can be put together so the car can figure out what to do. But let's take a step back and learn about artificial intelligence. This is human intelligence exhibited by machines, and it's been around since the 1950s. But until recently, we haven't had enough data to train the machines or the compute power to process that data. Affordable compute is mainly being driven by NVIDIA, who changed the game with their programmable GPUs, which can process enormous amounts of data simultaneously. NVIDIA's GPUs are used to build a deep learning neural network. A neural network is loosely based around the brain. It's a biologically inspired programming paradigm, which enables a computer to learn from observational data. Deep learning is a set of techniques that computers use to learn inside of neural networks. AI and deep learning are key technologies in pilot and drive, and we can find characteristics of this on the road today when it comes to object and image recognition and collision avoidance. But if we really want cars to learn to drive truly autonomously, the car is gonna to need to learn on its own and have the ability to quickly resolve complex situations. Today, I'm visiting with Audi to learn more about their pilot and drive system. I really wanted to understand how deep learning applied to piloted driving. So I checked out the model vehicle Q2 deep learning concept. The car has developed strategies to learn a number of complex tasks like parking. At first, the algorithm learns on the computer's parking simulation with several million repetitions. In deep reinforcement learning, positive results are rewarded with a high score and the error values decrease significantly over time. The sensors on the model car are the same as what appears on a full-size car like Jack, Audi's piloted drive A7. Even though this is my first time driving in an autonomous car, I completely trust it. My biggest problem was I didn't know what to do with my hands. On my second drive, I was joined by Sophia by Hansen, who is a robotic AI, and Dr. Klaus Furvine, who really got into explaining deep learning and piloted drive to me. Uh, several deep learning environments, for example, for percepting the environment, for example, for um, building realistic and uh, natural driving behavior, for example, for the prediction of what this car will do in the next second. And these are all uh, puzzle pieces of deep learning, and they have to come together in a, um, in a software architecture environment. The equation to map a black hole is very, very complex, very deep, um, but if, if there will be an error in the equation, Okay, you get a wrong um, you, you get a wrong result, right. but no no there will be no accident. Right. If you get a wrong uh, a wrong output of an equation in a car driving 130 kilometers an hour on the autobahn, um, it's safety relevant. Right. Yeah. Can, can you actually explain which which parts of the autonomous drive are, are best for deep learning? Yes, definitely um, in perception, mm -hmm. um, deep learning is already playing a big role, and that will. That will go on. So there are so many uh, possible objects on the road which you can't describe by if 
I see something right. that looks like them, yeah. them, then. and if not them, <laughs> not them well, yeah. <laughs> that, there's, there's no way to describe right. it. So perception and object detection will be um, come to uh, and, and prominently move on to next levels by deep learning, definitely. So what does this even mean for the average consumer? Is autonomous drive coming our way? Well, for Audi, new A8 is going to feature a lot of characteristics of Jack. If you have any questions about autonomous drive, So what we just saw uh, in this previous video was how deep learning is playing a significant role in autom autonomous driving. And if you want to know more about it, I guess Nick has really good knowledge about autonomous driving and how deep learning is applied in it. Uh, one more thing you might have noticed in the previous video is that there was a humanoid robot called Sophia. So if you don't know who Sophia is, Sophia is a humanoid robot which was recently created. And it's one of the most significant developments in the field of machine intelligence. Uh, basically, the reason behind this is it combines a lot of uh, deep learning parameters like uh, the NLP, the National Language Processing, uh, computer vision, it has pattern recognition. So basically, it's a combination or an amalgamation of all these different domains into one single humanoid robot. And it's probably the closest we have ever achieved to replicate the human being. Um, okay, uh, so let's talk about some new breakthrough in the field. Um, that's GPT-3. Uh, so GPT-3 is a neural network powered language model which gets its basic function from natural language processing as Nick mentioned in his previous slide. Um, it was rec uh, released recently uh, in July 2020 by a research group called OpenAI. Um, so let's start with asking what is a language model? A language model is a model that predicts the likelihood of a sentence existing in the world. For example, a language model can label the sentence, I take my dog for a walk, as more probable to exist uh, than the sentence, I take my banana for a walk. This is true for sentences as well as phrases and more generally, uh, any sequence of characters. And uh, like most language models, GPT-3 is elegantly trained on an unlabeled text data set. Uh, words or phrases are randomly removed from the text and the model must learn to fill them in only um, by understanding the words surrounding them as a context. Uh, it's a simple training task that results in a very powerful um, and a generalizable model. So GPT-3 has 175 billion parameters which is 10 times larger than the second largest model of any other kind. Um, and as a result of its humongous size, GPT-3 can do what no other model can do. Um, it can perform specific tasks without any special tuning. You can ask GPT-3 to be a translator, a programmer, a poet, or a famous author, and it can do it with its user providing less than 10, 10 uh, training examples. So let's take, uh, let's watch a demo for GPT-3. So if we look into the left link. Um, so here you see your Excel sheet um, and um, GPT-3 is told uh, to find the population of Michigan uh, since it's like, since the cell is empty. So it calculates uh, the values from all the previous cells and it finds a value for the population of Michigan and it does the same thing for Alaska. Um, and yeah, you see it's calculating the population just by understanding how Illinois, California, Ohio or, are calculated. It can even find out what the founding date of um, the state is just by understanding how the previous um, states have been, uh, ha have been configured to. So you can just see the video, how they're just doing all the calculation um, as it's just understanding from its previous cells. Um, okay, so now looking at the other link that we have, 
uh, for GPT-3. Um, so in this video, uh, you basically write, um, like it can find you your SQL query. So you just need to ask GPT-3 um, how many users have signed up since the start of 2020 and GPT-3 would calculate that and it would present a SQL query in front of you. So you can make GPT-3 do anything and uh, it, you would have your um, result in front of you. So it can find SQL uh, queries for you. It can, all the examples that I had previously mentioned in the slide. So yeah, that's what um, the new breakthrough is. So moving on to the next slide. Uh, so let's look into some of the popular tools for ML. Uh, well, uh, there are various tools that are available for ML, but some of them which are very common and something we would suggest you to use uh, would be the following. So for libraries in Python, we would be using TensorFlow uh, 1 and 2, PyTorch, TorchVision, Scikit-Learn, NumPy, Pandas, etc. Some development IDEs would be Collab, uh, Jupyter Notebook, and Anaconda, and we would be using Collab in our hands-on tutorial section. Uh, some of the sites that are useful to learn machine learning um, uh, is Stack Overflow, GitHub, and obviously you can Google it. Yeah, um, so as Shubha mentioned, you can always Google it as Google is the most powerful tool you can use. Every question you want to ask, you, you might find the answer on Google and you, you can also learn through these processes. But um, here are some resources to learn as well as some websites um, are very useful. Um, for example, Medium articles and Taurus Data Science articles, they provide uh, great concepts for um, a lot of um, useful terms in machine learning and you can learn by yourself uh, about uh, some basic understanding into machine learning. And uh, uh, about the courses, right? On some on other online courses like Coursera's, um, the famous learning one by Andrew Hume, and um, what other academies can provide. Those are very good um, online courses that you can um, learn through their um, uh, processes. They Some of them even provide you sample files and code, and you can um, follow their steps to understand stuff and try to do it yourself. And of course, um, there are uh, YouTube videos to explain a lot of stuff. And um, there are articles on GitHub because there are a lot of repositories on GitHub and those, those um, um, uh, the, 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 the programmers, they will also provide tutorial on how to use some of the packages library. So it will be very useful just for you to read the documentation on GitHub rather than um, searching other places, how other people documented. And uh, finally, we have um, some data sets um, from uh, GitHub or Scikit-Learn that you, you can download and train your own model. And finally, yes, yeah, Sheldon, yes, so Sheldon can talk, take over about CSC 2515 as he's the um, main TA of this course. And there are many useful resources there as well. Shall yeah. do you want to? Sure, since I'm still here. Um, so, so this semester I'm the, uh, I'm the head TA for this course. Basically, um, I develop a self-study guide um, for, because it's a graduate course and prerequisite is not enforced. So like some people don't have all the prerequisites. So I basically developed a um, um, self-study guide, um, the, the link. Um, okay, let me, let me send the link in the chat because it's on, it's, it's, it's probably hard for you to type in, um, like you can't copy and paste, but I think the idea is basically, uh, it's like a blog. Uh, there's like videos, um, some, some of them pre-recorded uh, to cover the backgrounds and like contents in the lectures the, and there's guidance. So the idea is that everyone can learn on their own. Um, it's like a pointers to all the stuff that's like there. Um, well, the, in the course, we have tutorial sessions um, where basically it's like Q&A. Students are just like asking questions they, they have about the materials, but unfortunately, like we don't allow auditing this year. Um, but I guess you can always just 
learn from the, the self-study guide and ask questions, I guess, in Discord. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll, I'll copy and paste the link. Yeah, thank you, Sheldon. Um, okay, uh, for some, some of the machine learning courses offered by U of T, so there are various courses that you can take up to learn machine learning, but uh, some of the ones that I would want to pick out specifically would be CSC 311 um, and CSC 401413, which is Introduction to Machine Learning, Natural Language Computing, Neural Networks, and Deep Learning. So that's for students who are in the Arts and Science faculty. For um, applied science, APS 360 is one of the most um, famous courses to learn machine learning. And if you want to take any stats course, so it's stats 314 and 414, um, and they're basically the exclusions to uh, CSC 311. Um, so yeah, these are some of the most important um, courses that you should uh, take if you want to learn machine learning, and the rest are um, if you are interested in taking. Okay, I, I saw a question. What's the difference between machine intelligence course and the machine learning course? So I think um, machine machine intelligence is similar to artificial intelligence, right? And we have already um, explained the difference between the two. And um, I, I don't know if there are uh, any courses like specific um, uh, teaching about uh, machine intelligence, but I think um, um, in general, um, m machine learning will will uh, mainly rely on building the models and 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 learning. And uh... oh, okay. So so I would suggest um, you you should probably uh, explore it yourself and uh, click on the um, course introduction and see if the best fits because. Uh, I'm not the expert or instructor of that course. I cannot provide you with every information you want. Okay, so, uh, but we, we could um, discuss later if, if we, in Discord. Right. So um, back to the slide. Um, you can also work on machine learning projects in academic or engineering departments um, with our um, uh, directors, or you can apply for the director uh, or uh, developer position as we mentioned in the first hour. And also we'll be having um, professor and graduate student talks in the, in, in the conference or later um, in, maybe it will happen in this workshop session as well. We may find some speakers from uh, in, in the industry or some professors to give, give a talk about their research. Um, okay, so now we have reached uh... Um, to the end of our workshop, and there are a few things that we would want you to think about. Um, so let's think about uh, how do you think a machine learns in a way which is similar to humans? Like, like humans, do machines also make mistakes while learning a new concept? And if so, how? And how do machine learning algorithms encourage a machine to learn rather than producing a fixed predictable output? So here are some questions for you to think about. Um, and if you do have an answer, um, that's great. And if you don't, uh, so we have our next workshop that's coming up on October 1st, uh, which is by Nick. Uh, and he would be talking about, um, he would be basically answering these questions uh, by talking about supervised learning and supervised learning as a whole. Uh, so automatically these questions uh, would be answered. So I suggest you all to um, join the next workshop, which is on October 1st. Um, so yeah, here are the details for the next workshop. Um, you can stay posted uh, about all the new information through our Discord server, um, through our social media accounts, as mentioned in the AGM slides. Um, and definitely Facebook, Twitter, and all of our socials. And yeah, that's the end of our Missed 101 uh, session. And I thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we will be releasing a video recording of this workshop soon. And 
make announcements regarding our future workshops. Uh, so please make sure that you join our Discord server so that you don't miss any updates. Um, and if you would like to stick around, uh, now it's the time to meet our team. Uh, we will be switching to our Discord server where we would be having some voice channels set up. So you can have a quick chat about our Miss 101 session uh, with the academic mentors, uh, meet some of our project directors, as well as, as, well as ask um, any of the execs any lingering questions about the club. Uh, you can find all the voice channels under our AGM section on Discord. And uh, I would shortly put in the Discord server link on the chat. Um, feel free to move around, join any channels you're interested in. And if you wish, you can also leave us some written questions in the general text channels, and we will be facilitating those channels as well. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks everyone. Um... Um, also, yeah, we also have a feedback form. Uh, we kindly request you to fill in those feedback forms so that we know how we did and if there's anything we, you want us to improve on. And make sure to join Discord. Yeah, so see you there.